Sigma Tiger news all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Broken border confirmed. Hijab hit woman and fire liar Canada. <laughs> Boom! TGIF, people, let's get right into it because it's a beautiful day outside and the tiger wants to get it. Border Patrol, absolutely, our border is by no means secure. People need to know, no one is coming to save you. Add in the mass amnesty plan from the Biden administration that is parole in place, and the lie that takes care of the present has no future. All right, let's just uh, have a little listen on this, see what's going on here. Okay, actual bad guys that they're catching. So there are bad people coming across the border. This is seven minutes long, so we're not going to listen to all of this. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to check it out, Alison Dyer uh, at Third Jenner on Twitter, and you can go ahead and listen to that entire uh, interview there. It's done by News Nation. It's a border agent talking about, like, truly what's coming across the border is horrific, and nothing's being done about it. It's all being lied about. Well, let's go ahead. Border Patrol Memo tells agents in key sector to release migrants from nearly all Eastern Hemisphere countries. What? Uh, okay, so after Biden's executive order banning asylum for most illegal crossers took effect last week, a memo shows up and it's saying, yeah, listen, don't hold them, release them. Okay? Uh, so it was obtained by Fox News instructs agents in the San Diego sector to release single adults from all but six countries in the Eastern Hemisphere and classify them as hard or very hard to remove. The memo was sent out after President Biden executive order banning asylum for most legal immigrants took effect last week. Biden announced the order on Tuesday and said that he was moving past Republican obstruction and using executive authorities available to me as president to do what I can on my own to address the border. Yeah, well, congratulations. You waited like three years to do it, old man. What a fool. Yeah, so like why do you even wait? Oh, well, we want to, like, get along with the Republicans. Nah, 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 nah. This is all planned out. It's a joke. Like, it's literally, like, all political. Details in the memo first reported by the Washington Examiner's Anna Giarritelli instructs agents that all single adults from Eastern Hemisphere are to be pro processed via NTA slash OR, which means notice to appear, release on own recognizance. Like, please come to your court date and you just go ahead and do your thing. Everywhere except for Russia, Georgia, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Moldova, and Kyrgyzstan, which are mandatory referral countries. So anyone else from any eastern countries, it's catch and release. Broken. All right, so here we have Tajikistan nationals arrested. Okay, so maybe this is why they're on the list. Eight suspected ISIS-K terrorists have been arrested in Los Angeles, New York, and Philadelphia. They illegally crossed the southern border earlier this year and were released into the U.S. by the Biden administration. All right, let's go ahead and have a listen in on this. Eight individuals, all from the Central Asian country of Tajikistan, were arrested in Los Angeles, New York, and Philadelphia. 
They entered the United States this year and in 2023, crossing the Mexican border. They were vetted and allowed to remain in the country. CBS News has learned further investigation uncovered the men had possible ties to ISIS-K, the terror group which claimed responsibility for an attack at a Moscow concert hall that killed more than 140 people earlier this year. Eight individuals, all from the same... Yeah, so that's who we got crossing the border in here. They were vetted, of course. These people are totally fine. They just want a piece of the pleasure pie. Come on in. Give them the debit card. Wait, wait a minute. They're with ISIS? Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, they were properly vetted. Uh, we don't know what happened there. <clears throat> yeah, so anyway, here's another one. Uh, they received full vetting by the authorities and were released into the U.S. Later, one of them was caught talking about bombs on the phone. So there you have it. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at this. Okay, so they're stating that the Border Patrol agent cannot do anything. He's forced to let them cross. And uh, we got the coyote on the other side getting video footage of this being like, guys, you got to get a load of this. We're literally just getting paid tons of money, driving truckloads of internationals up to the border. And look, there's a little gap in the fence. They're not doing anything. So clearly, the border is 100% non-existent. All right, unmasked, the hit woman in the hijab, on the run American whose double life as an assassin for hire was exposed after a jam gun saw her botch a contract killing in Birmingham. These are the first pictures of the seemingly unassuming American tourist whose secret double life as an alleged assassin for hire was exposed after a jam gun saw her botch a contract killing in Birmingham. Amy Betro, 44, flew from her native Milwaukee to kill boutique clothing store owner Sikandar Ali, on the orders of rival Muhammad Aslam, 56, and his son Muhammad Nazir, 30. A trial in the UK heard how the hit woman who worked as an administrator for the Milwaukee Brewers baseball team disguised herself in a hijab before trying to gun down Ali uh, outside a house in Acox Green, Birmingham on September 7th, 2019. She fled the scene when her gun jammed, but later returned in a taxi and fired three shots at the property before texting their principal target, Mr. Ali's father, Aslat Muhammad, Stop playing hide and seek. Where are you hiding? Betro, who studied early childhood education at the local college in Milwaukee, flew back to the U.S. two days later after a failed contract killing, and today, West Midlands police said efforts to find her continue. There's no suggestion Betro stands accused of any other attempted hits. Image of the woman, very jovial. Another image there, tongue pierced, braids in her hair, uh, quite the filter there with some sparkling whatever. Anyway, what else? What's the story? Nazir and Aslam were found guilty of conspiracy to murder on Monday, held a grudge against Mr. Ali's family following a violent dispute at his boutique clothing store in Birmingham on July 21st, 2018, which saw windows smashed and the interior trashed. Police arrived to find Nazir and Aslam had been injured. In September 2019, the pair flew Betro, over from the States to Birmingham in a bid to kill Mr. Ali and his family. During her time in the UK, the hit woman stayed at hotels in Manchester, Derby, London, Brighton, and Birmingham, including the Radisson Blue. While in Derby, she allegedly made an insurance claim claiming she had suffered a blown-out tire on a rental car before smashing into two stationary vehicles, one of which was owned by Aslam. Interesting. Before the failed assassination, uh, Betro texted Mr. Muhammad to ask about him buying a Volkswagen Golf from him. She then sent further messages saying, Who is it? Your family or you, and pick one, as she told the target to meet her at Azda. On September 6th, Nazir and Aslam traveled from their home in Derby to Birmingham City Center, where Nazir, spending more than two hours in Birmingham's Rotunda Hotel with Betro, who ordered a takeaway from Deliveroo. Birmingham Crown Court heard how Betro disguised in a hijab, pulled up in a Mercedes before Mr. Ali pulled up in an Audi nearby. Kevin Hegarty, KC prosecuting, said, uh, as he did the would-be assassin came from the driver's side of the mercedes as she left the mercedes she left the driver's door open she walked quite calmly towards sikandar ali and was pointing a gun at him at head height as she got closer to sikandar he saw her and he saw the gun and she pulled the trigger to fire the gun at him mercifully and luckily for him the gun done jammed there's an image of the uh suspects looks like he was beaten down 
another image of the woman, how she got wrapped up in all this interesting process, probably the dark web. Uh, Mr. Haggerty said Mr. Ali rapidly reversed his car and drove off while Betro abandoned her Mercedes nearby where it was later found by police. So crack team of criminals here, obviously all their first time doing this. How they did this is unbelievable. Uh, what a joke. Next morning, she took a taxi to the house and fired three shots at the property before returning to the taxi and going to McDonald's in Bordesley Green. No one was hit. Afterwards, Betro sent Aslat Muhammad a text saying, You want to rip me off? You want to be a drugs kingpin? Go look at your house. I will show you. Watch your back. I will be shedding blood soon. So the uh, guy who got the contract is texting them. So the evidence is just mounting here. Uh, the father replied, What are you talking about? I'm a family man. I've never sold drugs in my life. Like, what the? <laughs> what are you doing? What? So we got a bunch of disgruntled uh, people who were attacked and wanted revenge and clearly went about it the wrong way. They were found guilty of conspiracy to commit murder and uh, the woman is still on the lam. Keep you posted of any updates. Covenant Journal revealed Shooter said being female was a mm, curse and that she'd kill to have puberty blockers. So what is this? There was a shooting at a uh, Covenant christian school and a transgender individual uh was the culprit you know she went in there and shot the place up killed six people i believe and the fbi doj all these people are like we cannot release the manifesto it would cause conspiracy theories and uh against a marginalized group so uh, and it has nothing to do with religion absolutely it has nothing to do with anything like that there's no political motivation here at all anyway People got to see the book. They took some pictures. They released it. The Covenant School Shooter obsessed in her private journal over a desire to be a man, fantasizing about having an imaginary penis, and lamenting that so-called gender-affirming treatments weren't available to her according to images of her journal obtained by the Daily Wire. The handwritten journal recovered by authorities at the scene of her deadly attack have been hidden from the public for more than a year now leaving unresolved questions about her motive to attack the private Christian school in March 2023. Images obtained by the Daily Wire from a source familiar with the Covenant investigation provide perhaps the most thorough illustration of her mental state in the days leading up to the shooting. All right. Uh, yeah, so she wrote about some stuff, fragments in the journal below entry. So there it is, an image of the journal. So let's see. The first entry that appears is fashioned as a letter to someone named Paige. It's unclear exactly who this is, though Paige is also the name of a woman the shooter played basketball with as a child who detailed to ABC News how the shooter had long been infatuated with her. Paige called authorities after the shooter messaged her on the morning before the attack. Good for you, Paige. The journal entry reveals disdain for Christianity and specifically her parents' alleged attempts to maintain religion in her life. It's total ignorance when parents step in and try to change their child's environment, make them go to youth group and force Christian friends in their life because the ones uh, were bad influence. I can't stand this. Sh parents actually believe religion can change nature. That could explain why I don't practice religion anymore. Let kids think for themselves. Listening to parents does no damned good but to mold their premature minds into a pre-formatted program. Yeah, so this is typically a kid, a teenager. She's, you know, up against her parents who are trying to, like, give her a good foundation in life and not let her lop and chop and turn into a monster. But guess what? Didn't work. She became one anyway. Officials have denied that there was evidence suggesting that the Covenant School, a private Christian school, that the shooter attended as a child was targeted because of animus towards religion. The mentions of Christianity which appear throughout the journal entries suggest that it certainly may have been a factor. Absolutely. The remainder of the four pages, however, revolves around the shooter's fixation on being a man and suggests a serious case of gender dysphoria, clearly. She fantasized about what it would be like to have a penis. I want to know what it's like, but I never will because I was damned to be born this way. I swear to, I hate it so damn much. It's a curse. The journal entry shows both anger at living through the torture of being raised a girl, as well as her mother and people in this world for not accepting that she could change her gender. She complains that for much of her life she actually believed and she had to deal with it until she learned that changing genders was possible. No, it's not. You can uh, have surgery to appear like the other gender, just as you can put on a mask and appear like a tiger, but I'm clearly not, obviously. That didn't last long after high school ended and no longer had to fear being called a dyke or a fut. She writes, it was only until my early 20s I finally found the answer. That's changing one's gender as possible and who I really was I finally embraced a show. 
Children who are able to successfully take two puberty blockers and never enter a tortured puberty, those little f goods don't know how good they have it, the shooter wrote. I'd kill to have parents who would let their child be happy no matter how different it is for their viewpoints or don't agree or scared of it. They are willing to listen to their children, not the other way around. I'd kill to have those resources. And she did, and now she's dead. And if reincarnation exists, perhaps she'll come back and have that opportunity. Unlikely. F parents like them who think of themselves first and their preference of conservative religion, the shooter writes in the entry of her imaginary penis. A bare flat chest made me free. Girl puberty imprisoned me. And so does my mind. Puberty equals life sentence. The people in this world adds more bullets to shoot violent thoughts into my head on full auto. So what a violent psychopath this person is. Completely mentally unhinged from reality. All right, what else do we have? She referenced white privilege. Crackers going to private fancy schools. So she's also a racist. Uh... Now, the FBI came out and said they didn't want false narratives that would lead to unintended consequences for the segment of population for vulnerable or open to conspiracy theories. Well, the truth is, she is a psychopath with a tremendous amount of mental health issues. She's also a racist. Um, yeah, she was a violent criminal, clearly. She wrote in the journal, puberty already hit. Before puberty blockers were a medical possibility for her, it's unclear whether she learned this or what medical information or beliefs is based on. In the same entry, she also described herself as having an autistic brain. Yeah. I can pretend to be them and do things boys do and experience my boy self as Tony. My stuffed boy doll is like the boy I am in another form since childhood. I constructed him a penis, then got out my girl doll named Ashley, who is Tony's lifelong boyfriend, to have sex with Tony. Ashley was represented as my dream girl I wished to have in real life. Yeah. So this person clearly needed help, not church. She needed a doctor who was willing to listen to her, not affirm her uh, fantasies, but just talk to her, get to the root of it. Perhaps if she was abused or uh, experienced some level of trauma as a child, which is likely. All right, well, uh, sticking to it, we here we have Leah Thomas, former uh, William, I believe, transgender swimmer Leah Thomas, out of Olympics after losing legal ballot, which she was never in. Uh, the U.S. swimmer Leah Thomas, who rose to global prominence after becoming the first transgender athlete to win an NCAA college title in March 2022, has lost a legal case against World Aquatics at the Court of Arbitration for Sport and with any hopes of making next month's Paris Olympics. The 25-year-old also remains barred from swimming in the female category after failing to overturn rules introduced by swimming's governing body in the summer of 2022, which prohibit anyone who has undergone any part of male puberty from the female category. And there really should just be a trans category. If you've gone through puberty, or if you haven't, you join the trans category. And if you won't even want to separate that further, you have post-puberty, pre-puberty category. But you shouldn't mix men, biological males, with biological females post- or pre-puberty. It just shouldn't. Just create a new category. And if they say they're a woman and it's not fair, well, too bad, people. Because guess what? Life's not fair. I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I want to be a YouTube star. Well, guess what? I'm grinding here. I got like a thousand videos posted. And I have a modest 175 followers. And thank you all for following. Continue watching. I love it. And you got something to throw down in the comments. Let's, let's talk about it. You want a shout out? Let's do it. Anyway, Leah Thompson, you have been denied. Deranged suspect who stabbed toddler to death outside supermarket was freed from jail just days earlier as judge defends the decision. Of course, here we have the smirk of this sick individual. So a suspected deranged killer charged with stabbing a three-year-old boy to death outside Ohio supermarket had only just been cut loose by a judge three days before the frenzied attack. So the judge did an excellent uh, mental health evaluation there. Uh... But she was referred to have one. What happened? I guess she didn't make it. Bianca Ellis, 32, was arrested after allegedly butchered the toddler, Julian Wood, with a kitchen knife at a Giant Eagle grocery store in North Olmsted on June 3rd in what cops describe as a random act of violence. But it's since emerged that Ellis had another run-in with cops just days earlier after she'd taken into custody on May 29th for probation violation tied to a petty theft arrest. So she escalated quite quickly on that one. During her arraignment for the probation violation arrest at Rocky River Municipal Court Magistrate ordered Ellis, who had been accused of stealing $69 worth of merchandise from Walmart, to undergo a psych check after it became unclear if she was paying attention or falling asleep during the proceedings. You know, she was quite proud of uh, her 
illegal activity. Ellis then ended up back on the streets May 31st after a different magistrate, Judge Brian Hagen, ordered she be released from custody. Yeah, clearly she's not a danger to anyone. Just go ahead and release her. There wasn't any red flags shooting up that pole, Hagen said as he defended his decision to cut her loose. There wasn't any indications here. No sign of mental distress. No sign of previous violent acts. Did they put her through the uh, psychiatric evaluation? The judge added that the mental health team that carries out evaluations for the court didn't have anyone available. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, it's clearly we can't keep her in here, even though we should, because she's a criminal. And here is an image of the poor boy, and we pray for his soul. Three-year-old Julian Wood was sitting in a shopping cart outside the store when he was knifed. Absolutely sick. She's now being held on $5 million bond in the wake of last week's bloodied violence outside the grocery store. She allegedly stabbed the child to death while he sat in the shopping cart and also wounded his 38-year-old mother, Margaret Wood, after following them into the parking lot. The mother was about to load her groceries in the car when Ellis allegedly charged them with a knife, stabbing the boy twice in an attack that lasted less than five seconds. The mom was knifed in the shoulder after trying to pull Julian from the cart during the stabbing frenzy. There's an image of Judge Brian Hagen just dusting his hands off of any possible uh, responsibility. Little boy was pronounced dead at the hospital. Ellis, who was also charged with murder and attempted murder, later smirked her way through the arraignment as counsel read against her. She giggled and replied, See? Si. Yes, for in Spanish. So, sick individual. Lock her up. San Francisco declares itself a transgender sanctuary city. What does that mean? Uh, supervisors officially designated the city as a sanctuary for transgender and other gender non-conforming individuals. A growing number of municipalities and states have taken similar stance in reaction to the ongoing legislative assaults against trans rights. Now, they're promoting women's rights, the ones that they fought for, and uh, you create new ones. Trans aren't women. They're trans. They're humans who have a mental uh, disorder where they believe reality is not, uh, you know, have any effect on them. They're just going to live in their own fantasy. And if you don't play along, then they usually use violent words or, uh, you know, violent rhetoric to uh, attack you. I mean, just go on Twitter and just see like they're like if you don't affirm me i'll stab you if you misgender me i'm gonna gut you like they're crazy literally crazy and uh here it is okay so uh the sanctuary is from reality hey justin after a spring full of liberal mps screaming the planet will burn will your government do the right thing and call an election unlikely uh harjit sajan admits wildfires are well below the average for this time of year and well below the 10-year average the people who told us the planet would burn and that 2024 would be the hottest year in human history are proven wrong again. Up to now. So this thing, just because last year was hot doesn't mean this year's going to be hot. Anyway, let's see what this guy's saying. To date, 500,000 hectares have burned. Now, but in spite of the situation, the good news uh, is that the number of fires is well below average for the, this time um, of the year. It is also well below the 10-year average for the total area burn this time last year as well they're now 69 boom there it is that's all you need to know <laughs> whatever all right but watch out environment canada the government organization they've released this map 2024 we expect above average temperatures throughout most of the country these conditions are likely to result in other severe weather events look at this propaganda here my gosh so here we have it look at this map we have Canada just on fire here. So basically they're just saying the probability percentage near normal. Only on the west coast in the ocean, on coastal. Over here on the east coast in Newfoundland, they're going to get lit up. They did have some wildfires last year. So they're predicting now that the entire east coast of Canada will uh, be completely engulfed in heat. But wildfires are down. So this here is a, an amazing amount of fear porn and propaganda it's unbelievable like i seen the weather network the other day and it was like 25 degrees was like orange and 30 degrees was red 30 degrees is not red 35 to 40 i can understand more like dark red orange 40 degrees is red 40 degrees is red 30 degrees is yellow orange come on people what a joke anything else 
boom. Here we go. Who are Biden voters saving the planet for if none of them are having children? I thought this was funny. We're not going to really get into this. But, you know, you have all these environmentalists, these liberals, and they're all like, you know, not procreating. They're all alternative lifestyle. Not all, but there's a percentage of liberals that are more alternative than the conservatives who are typically more fundamentalist or traditional with procreation. Well, they're dead set on saving the planet and creating all these regulations for the future generations, but it's not their kids. So what are they saving the planet for? Why do they care so much about the future generations that are not even related to them? So another cognitive dissonance there, but we're not going to get into it. It's just something funny about the liberal mind that, again, doesn't uh, compute correctly. And there you have it, people. TGIF, thank you for tuning in. Like, subscribe, throw it down in the comments. Uh, Jack, J-A-X-K, you're the man. Keep commenting. We love it. You are the Sig Tig. And happy birthday to anyone out there who is a Sig Tig. Sigma Tiger signing out.